Welcome to this tutorial on hypothesis testing for the population proportion. Before viewing this tutorial, you should already be familiar with the concept of hypothesis testing and how to conduct both a one-tailed and two-tailed test using the critical value approach and the p-value approach. If these concepts are not familiar to you or you need a refresher, please make sure to watch part one of my tutorial on hypothesis testing. Just as we had three forms of hypothesis testing for the mean, we also have three forms for hypothesis testing for population proportions. The first form looks like this. You can see that the alternative hypothesis has a less than symbol in it, so this is a one-tailed or lower tail test. Because the hypothesis focuses on a direction, it is a one-tail test, and since we are looking for evidence to support the alternative hypothesis, we are focused on the lower tail of the distribution. The lower tail would be our rejection region. The next form for an hypothesis test would look like this. As you can see, this form also has a focus on a direction, so it is also a one-tail test, but this time the focus is on the upper tail, so it is an upper tail test. You can see on the distribution that the upper tail region is marked off with the rejection region. We know it is an upper tail test by looking at the alternative hypothesis. We see a greater than sign, so we know we are focused on the greater than or upper tail of the distribution. And the third form our hypothesis can take is like this, with equal to and not equal to signs in the hypotheses. This form is called a two-tail test, since there are two tails of rejection on the distribution. In this case, we are concerned with both tail areas. If the test statistic is too far above the hypothesized proportion, or if the test statistic is too far below the proportion. One more comment about the form of these hypotheses. Notice we have substituted p for mu in the hypotheses. That is because we're now testing for the population proportion instead of the population mean. So let's take a look at an example to see how this is done. Let's start with a two-tailed example testing for the population proportion. Suppose a retailer believes that 80% of his customers use a credit card when making a purchase. A sample of 200 customers showed that 155 used a credit card to make their purchase. At the 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence that the true population proportion differs from 80%? The first step would be to state the null and alternative hypotheses. Since the question asks if there is evidence that the true population proportion differs from 0.8, then we are not focusing on a direction, and so our hypotheses are equal to and not equal to the hypothesized proportion. So we write the null as the status quo, that the population proportion is equal to 0.8, and the alternative would be counter to that, that the population proportion is not equal to 0.8. There is no focus on a direction here. It is just equal to or not equal to. The next step is to calculate the test statistic. For proportions, the test statistic is a z-test with p-bar minus p-naught, p-naught is the hypothesized value of the proportion, and in this case it's 0.8, and then that is divided by the standard error for p-bar, which is the square root of p-naught times 1 minus p-naught divided by n. Okay, so now how do we plug in the numbers? The first thing we need to do is to calculate p-bar from the sample. And how do we do that? Well, we said that 155 customers out of a sample of 200 said they used a credit card. So p-bar, the sample proportion, is 155 divided by 200, which is 0.775. So now we are ready to calculate our test statistic. 0.775 minus 0.8 divided by the square root of 0.8 times 0.2 divided by 200 gives us negative 8839. That is our test statistic. Now what is the next step in hypothesis testing? Well, if we're using the critical value approach, the next step is to look up the critical value. So let's look it up in the z-table. Alpha, our level of significance, was stipulated at 0.05. Since this is a two-tailed test, we split alpha in half and look up in the z-table 0.025. Here is the z-table. Looking in the middle of the table, we look for 0.025 and we find it right here. Then looking to the left, we find 1.9 and looking up, we find 0.06. So our critical value would be plus and minus 1.96.
So our critical value is plus and minus 1.96. And we previously calculated the test statistic as negative 0.8839. What is left to do is to compare the test statistic to the critical value and to come to a conclusion. Here is the distribution with the critical value marked off separating the rejection and non-rejection regions. So where does the test statistic fall in the rejection region or the non-rejection region? It falls around here in the non-rejection region. So our statistical decision would be do not reject the null hypothesis and then we write that in the context of the problem. There is no evidence that the proportion of customers using credit cards differs from 80%. Now let's see how we would do this using the p-value approach. To use the p-value approach, we need to first look up the test statistic in the z-table. Now remember we calculated the test statistic as negative 0.8839. Since this table only goes to the hundreds place, let's round that to negative 0.88. Now look under negative 0.8 and under 0.08 and you will find 0.1894. So the area in the lower tail is 0.1894. But remember this is a two tail test and since there are two tails we must first double the number and then compare it to alpha. So 0.1894 times 2 is 0.3788. Here is what that would look like on the distribution. You can see that since we have two tails, one tail has 0.1894 and the other tail also has 0.1894, adding up to 0.3788. Now let's review the rules for the p-value approach. We reject the null if the p-value is less than or equal to the alpha value, and we do not reject the null if the p-value is greater than alpha. 0.3788 is greater than alpha, 0.05, and therefore we do not reject the null, and we find there is no evidence that the proportion is greater than 80%. Notice we got the same result using the critical value approach and the p-value approach. They will always be the same result. Now let's look at what a one-tail test would look like. Let's say the department believes that at least 75% of students pass statistics on the first try then our hypothesis would be stated as follows. The null would be the status quo, what the department believes, which is that at least 75%, meaning 0.75 or more, so we would write greater than or equal to 0.75, passes statistics on the first try. Now the alternative is written counter to that, so we would write P is less than 0.75. That is what we are looking for evidence to prove. So now we go out and we take a sample of 150 students and we find that 102 passed on the first try. So P bar would be 102 divided by 150, which is 0.68. Now we are ready to calculate our test statistic, which looks like this. So plugging in the numbers, we get 0.68 minus 0.75 divided by the square root of 0.75 times 0.25, right, that's 1 minus p, over 150, you take the square root of that, and we get negative 1.9799. Now let's look up the critical value using a 0.05 level of significance. Looking in the middle of the z table for 0.05, we see that it is between these two numbers. And then looking to the left, we get 1.6, and looking up, we get somewhere between 0.04 and 0.05. So we will use negative 1.645 as our critical value. Okay, so back to our critical value approach. Looking up the critical value in the Z table, we did that already, and we got negative 1.645. Remember, our test statistic was negative 1.9799. So marking off 1.645, where would negative 1.9799 fall? And it would fall somewhere around here, which is our rejection region. And therefore, we would reject the null hypothesis and find that there is evidence that the proportion of students passing on the first try is less than 75%. We can also use the p-value approach to solve this problem.
In order to use the p-value approach, we first have to look the test statistic up in the z-table. The test statistic is negative 1.9799. Let's round that to 1.98. And so we look up 1.9 on the left, and on top we look up 0.08, and we get a p-value of 0.0239. So 0 0.0239 is the area under the curve to the left of negative 1.98. Now the rule for the p-value approach is to reject the null if the p-value is less than our alpha value and not reject the null if the p-value is greater than our alpha value. Now remember our alpha value is 0 0.05, so 0 0.0239 is less than 0 0.05 and therefore we reject the null hypothesis and find there is evidence that the proportion of students passing on the first try is less than 0.75 or 75 percent. That concludes this tutorial on hypothesis testing for the population proportion. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned something.